so much about chocolate. In 1949, Mr. Giardelli started his chocolate factory in San Francisco, and now we're making sure our local chocolatier right here in the Tri-States is making their way as well. 541, Hannah McNaff is learning all about her own obsession this morning, her obsession with chocolate. She is live in Hannibal this morning. Good morning, Hannah. Thanks for making the coffee before good. you left. Oh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I had to do something good because I'm surrounded by all this beautiful chocolate. So I felt bad for you guys at the station today, so I thought I would help you out. But hey, Chad, do you guys know that the uh, first story of the death by chocolate, the first um, person who ever died by death by chocolate? No, I don't. Would you like to be enlightened this morning? I would love to be enlightened. Okay. It was in Spain in the 18th century, and he, the Spaniards loved chocolate. They were addicted to it, but the church that they went to would not let them consume food in the church, so they could not consume their morning chocolate. So they actually poisoned the bishop by putting poison in his cup full of chocolate in the morning, and hence the first death by chocolate. Huh. Might be the second death by chocolate this morning, <laughs> as I am here at the ch chocolatier. Chocolatery. Chocolatery with Mary Glenn. Thank you so much for having us here this well, morning. Thank you for coming. It's absolutely beautiful, as you can see. Tell us a little bit about the history, why you guys are here in Hannibal, and, and kind of how you came to be. Well, we both grew up in Hannibal. We're lifelong residents. Um, my father had a clothing store just over where the movie theater is, and so I've always had an affinity for Main Street. And uh, and there's a good reason why. It's absolutely beautiful here. Thank you. So how did you get interested in all of these chocolates? This is, it's not an originally from here, correct? No. It's actually from Amsterdam, Holland, is where they origin the family originally started making chocolates in 1913. And Tom Stom, who is the youngest of seven brothers, decided to come to the United States about 20 years ago, mainly to get away from the chocolate business. And um, <laughs> however, he did bring all of his beautiful molds with him when he came and slowly started making chocolates in his home and uh, just as, for gifts as friend, for friends. And it sort of snowballed, and now we are his 11th store. 11th store. And they were a little bit hesitant about coming to this area, correct? You kind of had to do a little conniving. Very hesitant. Um, when we finally got, an, uh, got to go up to Des Moines to talk to Mr. Stom. Um, we ba he, he couldn't understand why a town this size would want to put a store like this here. And I said, well, number one, the people of Hannibal deserve a store like this. Mm -hmm. And number two, the tourists will love it. And he couldn't, he said, well, tourists, what kind of tourists? And we said, well, you know, Mark Twain, Tom Sawyer. And he said, who is Mark <laughs> Twain and who is Tom Sawyer? And we all just sat there and stared at him. And, uh, and then it dawned on me, he's from Amsterdam, Holland. And he, he might not know. It's not he didn't know. <laughs> and I told him, I said, every Japanese child in the world knows who Tom Sawyer <laughs> is. But anyway, they finally came to Hannibal, uh, fell in love with it like we all do. And I've already yeah. fallen in love this morning. <laughs> but we're going to have you come over. We're going to show you some of these chocolates a little up close. And the molds are absolutely amazing. Oh, are. Um, I was so proud of myself because when I came in this morning, I guessed hedgehog right. And Mark, yeah. I think, said some, a bird's face. So tell us a little bit about the molds and why they are the way they are. Well, I, I think that's part of the tradition of European chocolates is the beauty of them. And the, the mice, I think, are just, we love the mice. They're and darling. Every child that comes in here, that's where they stop, mm -hmm. right there. And they all want a little white mouse. And, um, but the, I mean, if you look at the detail on the molds, it's just amazing. And I saw over here, too, I'm going to have this move again. I saw over here that there's a tons of Christmas chocolates as well. So is it every season that you guys switch them up? Well, of course, this is our first Christmas here. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we had a beautiful, absolutely beautiful fall harvest collection that, oh, it was it, hard to explain. It was just gorgeous. And then just a couple of weeks ago, we got this absolutely fantastic Christmas collection straight from Belgium. They're all Belgium chocolates, as are these. And, uh, but these are made for us at our headquarters in Des Moines. Okay. And Absolutely beautiful. And the packaging, too. You guys don't just stop at the quality of the chocolate. Oh, no. You guys take it all the way through to packaging, too. We do. We do. We've got some gorgeous. We have the jewel boxes. We have our deluxe gift boxes. Um, for you just personally, if you want to buy some, we have just the little half-pound, one-pound boxes. It's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. You guys have to come here and check it out. But we're also talking gelato this morning, and it's not ice cream. We're going to find out all about that coming up in just a little bit.
How did you draw the, uh, this isn't, the, you drew the long straw to get the I got egg. the long straw this morning, Chad. I cannot be more ecstatic. The morning. gelato and the <laughs> chocolate place. Well, good. We'll check back in with you in just a few, Hannah. Oh, it's a little too busy to talk. <laughs> cool. Well, this is, oh, here it comes. This is chocolate, but with, with a kick. I'm going to let you know what I'm talking about when we come back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Hannah McNeff is live this morning in Hannibal, and I'm afraid we may have lost her for good. She is in the world of chocolate. It's almost like Hannah McNeff in the chocolate factory. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, Charlie and Chocolate Factory was by far my favorite movie growing up, and now it's just like I'm here in my heaven in Hannibal for sure because this is spectacular, and the chocolates were gorgeous, but I just tried chili chocolate gelato hmm. and i am joined with tony and he is going to explain a little bit why gelato has such that kick to it that regular ice cream doesn't have gelato has so much flavor ice cream is normally 50 to 60 percent air because of the width of the paddles and the speed of the paddles when they mix it where the paddles for gelato are real narrow and they go slower it's five to ten percent air so when you take a bite of gelato or a taste of gelato the flavor is so intense, it's condensed compared to ice cream. And I was an, I was an ice cream lover. That's how we got into this business. You've changed. You've changed I've over. Changed. Gelato yes. has taken your heart. Yeah, it sure it's taking has. mine right now, too. Yeah. And it's not made with, um, it's made with a different kind of milk. It's not, it's made, with not made with cream. It's made with whole milk. So it's not a health food, mm -hmm. but it is less calories. And it's a little better for you. But there's so many different flavors. And what I tried was chili chocolate, and it's seriously, there's chili at the end of this chocolate flavor. There is. Uh, what all that is is our chocolate base, and then we put cayenne pepper in it. So you get the ah. chocolate, you get the rich chocolate taste, and then at the very end, there's a little bit of a kick. A little bit of a kick. Tony, <laughs> I think I almost got kicked off my pants. That was awesome. <laughs> um, tell us about some other flavors, though. This is just, I'm totally amazed. The pistachio. These are, are basically our, our base flavors, the most favorite. There's pistachio. Uh, this time of year, there's pumpkin pie. The way we get a pumpkin pie, we take a whole 10-inch baked pumpkin pie and just put it right in the mix before it goes into the batch freezer. Uh, eggnog, of course, is seasonal. Mm -hmm. uh, ginger. Kicker is our, probably our number one seller. That's like a turtle. It's caramel and chocolate pecans. And it looks beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Vanilla, tiramisu, it's another big seller. And salt caramel and toasted almond. These are, are probably our, our four or five most popular flavors. Now, Lindsay, can I have milk? And there's good news for her, too. So if Lindsay's listening in, we have a special treat for her, too, right? And it's called sorbetto. It's a water base, water and sugar. But it's non-dairy, and the flavor in the sorbetto is even more intense than the flavor in the gelato. So we'll send some some uh, uh, some sorbetto back for Lindsay. Oh, Lindsay's going to be so so happy, and I'm so happy that I found this. I feel like I've been missing something my whole life by not knowing about gelatos, and they're they're absolutely beautiful. You guys serve them in a, a cute little cup, and you're more than welcome to come in and try them, and that's well, okay. We have the go cups, three different sizes. And we have the, uh, uh, the crystal uh, dishes that you can set out, enjoy a cup of coffee, and, uh, and a cup of gelato. Tony, I think you might have just switched me over. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a couple more taste tests, and I will, be, I will be sold totally. Well, you <laughs> told me you, you wanted to try a pistachio, so you're going to have to do that. Yep, let's, 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 try, right yep, let's okay. try it right now. Let's try a pistachio. I've never had pistachio anything, but it's a nut. I learned yeah, that, too. Okay. Potatoes, I'm eating. Here we go. It's a nut. Here right? we go. Watch your face. The mm -hmm. flavor is. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. It there, it hits. It, it takes a minute, and then all of a sudden, it's bam, and it's 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 in your face. It's it's sort of yeah, sort of just uh, slaps your taste buds and say, hey, here they are. All right, I think I found my my new love and my my new home. So. Sorry, guys. You lost me. I'm here to stay. Yeah. Well, Lindsay is, is, is over in the weather lab just giving a big fist pump to the uh, non-dairy. Lindsay's giving a fist pump. She's excited about the oh. non-dairy <laughs> sorbet. <laughs> I had like six questions, and you answered them for me already. So, cool. Lindsay, can we ask her what kind she wants? Does she want blood orange, lemon, or pink grapefruit? Oh, good gosh. Um, lemon, mm -hmm. I guess. Lemon. Okay. Coming right up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anna. We'll check Thanks, in with guys. you again later. Well, Hannah McNeff is live in Hannibal this morning. and certainly hoping our coffee here on the morning show gets a little better after your lesson this morning. Even though Hannah made it this morning, it is quite good. 
it's always good, but it's about to get better because I'm learning tricks of the trade. And everybody who gets a cup of coffee here also, get, also gets a speculous, speculous cookie. Speculous cookie. And yes. it's a Dutch windmill cookie. Yes, it is. And delicious. they're absolutely beautiful. And they're delicious, too. And as Mark follows us around, we have so much more to talk about. Let's go over to the licorice, too. Tell me about this licorice. It's not like any other I've ever seen. Well, it's, if you're a black licorice lover, you will really like this Dutch, Dutch licorice. And we have a couple of flavors that are not very common in the United States. We have a double salt and a regular salt. And, <clears throat> and Mark tried the double salt, and he couldn't talk for about three minutes. <laughs> no, he couldn't. <laughs> but he said he liked it. It kind of grows on you. You do have to acquire a taste. Um, but it's, and then the, the other licorices, the British all sorts are my favorites. I, I and like you, And you have a woman who comes in, and she is from? Yes. Margaret Miller was born in Holland, and she remembers going to church on Sundays and her mother giving her a piece of salt licorice to chew on to keep her quiet during church. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. I love that story. Also over here, I wanted to find these car the caramel waffles. Yes, strope waffles. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure there's a, a better pronunciation, but this is as good as I can come up with. Yes, they're um, two very thin waffles and they have a little layer of caramel in between. And the people in Holland put them on their top of their cup of coffee and let it steam and that caramel gets warm and I I like them just plain but they are really really good. I was going to say I'd have to have one for each hand, one for my coffee and one for me just to eat. Well, and you have stuff that people want to bake too? We do. We have the baking chocolates, we have dark chocolate, milk chocolate and white and we also have baking cocoa and it's not too late for Christmas. You can still bake some cookies and bring them to us if you'd like. <laughs> But uh, we have, oh, these are the speculos cookies here that we were, we were talking about yeah, earlier. Mm -hmm. And also over here, there's coffee too, and it's kind of a, you have a chocolate spin on your coffee. We do. Um, well, we have a chocolate coffee, actually, but this is the Stom blend, and it's made just for all of our stores, and it's kind of a funny story. At the factory where all the coffees are, well, made, whatever it is they do with coffee, the employees there enjoy drinking our blend because they think it's one of the better blends. See, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Chad, I'm official now. I have my apron on. You have officially lost me to the chocolate shop here in Hannibal. All right. Well, maybe we can find some way to coax you back and, and be back with us tomorrow. It's going to take quite a bit. Well, all right. Well, we'll see what we can do. Thanks, Anna. All right. Let's